personalization is obviously a tricky subject to broach, um, not least of which because there's always concerns around uh, PHI and other electronic uh, health information and uh, keeping that secure. In the meantime, though, it's important to note that, again, as Mike just said, having a patient portal uh, is not the same thing as having a personalized web experience. Uh, a good patient experience, and indeed any good online experience, really starts with the website itself. And an increasingly important, important component of that great experience is the ability to personalize content and tailor it down to the individual consumer or patient. So we're gonna talk about a couple different ways you can start to collect information about your users so that you can personalize their experience with your website applications. Um, in the first one, you can imagine a user coming to your website anonymously. So you, they're not logged in, you really don't know who they are. But as they start to engage with your website, you can start to fill out a profile of, of who they are and what their interests are. So you can imagine maybe um, a click zero, so even farther off to the left, of someone doing a Google search, uh, maybe from their phone, um, and they wanna find healthcare providers in their area. They land on your website on the home page, and from there they see a call out uh, for an article about heart health tips. They click that, you now know that they've come from a mobile device, you know uh, the area that they're in because they've uh, Google searched in that way looking for providers in their area, you know that they're interested in heart health, uh, perhaps from there they watch an introductory video, you know that they're interested in video content, and maybe they see that they can sign up for an e-newsletter for weekly heart health tips. Um, now you've got their email address and some more information about them. And if you can eventually get them to fill out a profile, you can fill out a picture of uh, their likes and interests and start to really tailor their experience. To go a little bit deeper, once you've gotten them to sign up, you can really start to tailor their experience. Um, now you know a lot more about them. Um, perhaps they've uh, connected a heart rate tracker, so they've got a Fitbit and they've connected information there. Um, Maybe they've signed up for a personal diet uh, reminders or information, getting recipes sent to them via email. Uh, all of these things can help uh, your patients with um, higher degrees of compliance for the recommendations from their healthcare provider, their doctor, um, and that can increase efficiency. So they're more likely to engage when the content is tailored to their needs. To go a little bit deeper, uh, we've kind of bucketed out the different types of personalization into three groups, behavioral, demographic, and interest-based. Behavioral might be uh, those interactions with the website or application, what they're clicking on, maybe they're liking or commenting or even rating content if you're allowing it, uh, the interactions that they have with the website or application itself. Demographic-based might be, uh, maybe they've shared their location uh, via geolocation. Maybe they've selected a specific language. You might know if they filled out a profile, some further information like gender. Uh, and interest-based, uh, back to the idea of signing up for an e-newsletter on a specific category. Uh, you can also track the types of content that they're viewing and engaging with. We wanted to share a few examples of websites that are doing this uh, types of uh, personalization right now. Uh, the first one, Memorial Sloan Kettering, um, right from their homepage, they allow users to self-select. So you can say, I'm here as uh, an adult patient, I'm here as a caregiver for a child or teen, maybe I'm a healthcare professional or a partner, uh, and I might be uh, a researcher. Uh, just by making that selection, you can start to tailor the rest of the content that your visitor is seeing uh, based on that selection. Um, you can see on the bottom here, they've also got uh, a location selector. So you might be able to start to tailor uh, content that way too, by showing uh, locations nearby, obviously, but also maybe events in their area. Um, Kaiser Permanente actually takes it a step further and does an auto location detection. So if I come to their homepage and click the find a facility, I immediately see all the facilities in my area. Um, every time I come back to the site, it's that much faster, reducing clicks, um, and you know that you can share information based on location very easily. 
At the farther cutting edge are uh, healthcare systems like ZoomCare, uh, and they've set up a website and application that is very much like um, an experience that's similar to an app like Uber or Grubhub or Starbucks, something that many consumers are very familiar with and starting to uh, expect in all of the interactions that they have. Um, right from the initial screen with uh, auto detection from geolocation, they can see um, healthcare providers in their area and even their availability. Um, from there, you can select your purpose for visiting. Um, maybe I'm concerned about um, some symptoms that I'm seeing and want to know if they're, if they're um, something I need to come in and, and make an appointment for. Um, I can initiate uh, a virtual chat uh, with a healthcare provider, um, talk through uh, the symptoms I'm, I'm feeling with a doctor, uh, and if they determine that I really should come in, I can make an appointment right through the app. And all of this is very um, quick and efficient uh, and easy to use.